Today we are looking at the Cohen Sim H125 or AS350B3E. It is just out and this is my first look. You have many different options that I'm going to run that I'm going to run through real quick. The door is open. And you can switch up the loadout really easily. You just go to your weight and balance and you change the weights for various things. Let's try the HEMS version. This is the HEMS. Around the world, what is that? This is the around the world loadout. This is the utility with crate version. Here it is with sling gear and spotlight. And why not add a Cineflex camera while we're at it? But we certainly don't need that for today's flight. Let's remove that. and have a closer look at the details of this aircraft. Look at how beautifully done the rotor system is. The exhaust, we'll, we'll look at the exhaust effect when we start it up. The rear, the tail rotor. It is a brand new looking helicopter, which is something I often talk about with all of the aircraft in this sim. There is a bit of scuffing on the skids, so we've skidded it a bit. And everything else looks brand new. And if you need different liveries, there are... There are... 100. There are 100 different paints for this helicopter. There's, there's this one and there's this one here and there's also this one. The biggest decision you have to make when flying this helicopter is which livery you're going to fly. So here we are inside. Let's check out this aircraft. The There are some parts. This is the part that I, I'm a little bit uh, not as excited about. Now, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's just that the dash here, this all looks a bit thick, right? That just It looks a little bit thick. And that's probably, well, the whole thing looks a little bit thick as I look around. Um, the window doesn't seem quite big enough, the front window, and the pillars seem a little bit like, I don't know, a little bit too thick. But that is a very minor thing, um, and it's certainly nothing that should keep you from enjoying the aircraft. Here's the back. It has nice leather seats when you're in this configuration. And I need to close the doors in preparation for start, so... I did, whoops, that's the wrong way. I think I just have to get closer to this door in order to, uh, there we go. You have to get a little close, there we go. Click spot. Find the click spot. That's always the fun thing with doors. Playing find the click spot. 
Nice sounds. Listen. Yeah, very nice sounds. And now, which tells me it's probably going to get too loud, but that's okay. I can adjust. I can make adjustments. So we have two different checklists that we can use. I have made some uh, quick camera views, something I like to do. If you want to know about that, let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll give you a link. Let me see. What else do I have? I have this one. I have that one. There we go. That is my action cam view back here. And um, the engine start. We have two checklists that come with it. This is one. This is the full checklist. I hope you can see that on the video. There's a short checklist and a long checklist, and I chose the longer one to give me plenty of opportunity to make more mistakes. Not an AS350 pilot, although I am a pilot and learned that checklists are very important. So here we go. First of all, startup clearance if necessary. Um, I don't think that's necessary at this airport. It, it, this is a towered airport. We're not using ATC today. Rotor free area clear so rotor is free we can see we can cheat and go outside and see that uh, the area is clear and the rotor is free that's as if someone was standing out there um cpw check governor light off well um all the lights are off because i haven't switched on power yet so i'm not sure what that means fuel pump on generator off did I miss something already? Oh, I did. I did. Maybe I should start over. Outside checks complete. That's what I was doing. Helicopter documents check. I didn't find any helicopter documents in here. I looked around. I didn't find any. So we're starting on seats and pedals adjusted. They are. Uh, rotor brake forward. That's the rotor brake. It's full forward. Fuel shutoff valve forward and secure. It is. That's the fuel shut off. Twist grip idle position. Now this is when I want to make sure that it's here because I'm not sure. Whoops. Why did it do that? Oh, because I touched it. Um, <laughs> I wanted to make I want to make sure. And at this point, you also should check your controls. Um, your that you have the right settings in the sim. So just make sure you set it up for helicopter controls. Hydraulic switch on. Now, wait a minute. I didn't see again. What did I miss? Twist grip, hydraulic switch on. Um, oh, that's right. So hydraulic switch on, which is here. Hydraulic switch is on. Um, engine starter overhead switch. This is very important. Off. So that has to be off. And then we do battery on, which is down here. It's an interesting battery switch. Battery on. So now everything is going to come on. Gen off. Gen is off. It's in the middle. So it's off. Uh, instrument light as necessary. GPS G430 on. So this will come on. That actually comes on in this, hel in this aircraft with the avionics. So I don't think I can turn it on on its own. I'm pretty sure that I cannot. Uh, so I'll just hit avionics and get them all on. Warning lights, test, and on. Uh, so the warning light test is... Check torque indicates 100% for two seconds. Um, there it is. There's the warning light, and you turn it off, and this will indicate 100% for two seconds. So this startup procedure is really cool. One, two. Okay. <laughs> it does everything that it's supposed to do. Um, a hydraulic test, pressure for two seconds, accu hydraulic test. Now that's right there. Pressure for two seconds. Oh, it flips up, but I don't know. There it is. It's just blinking, so I'm not sure what that means. Not sure if that's correct, but I don't think it's going to break anything. Warning panel. So um, the warning panel, when you hit this, uh, should have. Of gen fuel pitot horn and battery yellow and hydraulic engine pressure um, MGPP and twist grip in red. Those should all be red. 
Okay, you'll see that as you go along. Um, VMD check no messages. So this is the VMD right here. I had to look this up. Uh, no messages, two screens, battery at 22 volts, 28.2. So that would be a minimum 22 volts. Um, so the pedals and cyclic you need free travel. Come back over here. So cyclic and pedals, free travel. Um, collective down and locked. So that is down and locked for start. We don't really have a way to lock it. Heating system off. It is instrument static or zero. Yes. Flight time counter chrono checked here. So you would write that down in your notebook. Calm nav transponder off. Um, now the nav and tra well, you can turn the transponder off. I think. But uh, we can't turn the comms off because they're all connected to this, to everything else without turning the avionics off. So that's, that's interesting. Um, flight time counter chrono switches all off. And this says switches all off, but if um, I need the avionics switch on to see this start. So that's wild. Cargo hook we don't have. Engine to start. Start clearance received, rotor free, area clear. Uh, governor check light is off. And I still don't know where that is, the uh, governor check light. If you're following along with the manual, you'll see with the checklist. Mm, starter selector, okay. Fuel pump on, generator off, starter selector to on. So this is important, fuel pump on, generator off it is, and starter selector to on. Now, as soon as I turn it on, everything's gonna start to happen. So we have to watch the NG, the TOT, and the engine oil pressure. So that's the starter and it's a FedEx system. So in the real world, I watched a, a video on this and you hold, you hold this button in case there's a problem, you wanna shut it off. We're not gonna be able to do that. Go in here and we watch these, watch our instruments. At N1 greater than 60% VND switched um, FLI mode. Now I don't know where that is either. So I'm assuming that's gonna do that on its own because I don't know where FLI mode is. I don't know where that is. And we are far greater than 60%. Um, when we're here, generator comes on. Once we're greater than 60%, generator comes on. Pedot on, here we go. Fuel pump is off. The fuel pump is just for start, basically. Engine starter select guard closed. So we go back up here, and hopefully I won't kill the engine. We close this. There we go. I'm glad that worked. I, because if you switch that starter off, you have to start all over. Avionics on, which they are. All necessary systems on. Um, these won't work without the avionics switch being on, so that's why I left it on. Um, Calm nav, transponder, GPS on and set. So at this point is when you set your radios. We do have a map here and we have a map here. A couple different ways to put your uh, flights in. I don't have a flight plan today. I'm going VFR over Los Angeles. I would have to communicate if we had, if we were doing ATC, I would have to communicate to all of the um, different towers and such. But as we're not doing that today, I don't have to. I don't have to. Fuel pump is off, engine star select, avionics on, um, gyro attitude on. So our gyro is uncaged and it's on, it's set to zero. Our altitude is set, but let's make sure. Yeah, we're right at a thousand feet, that's kind of rare. That is kind of, of rare. Uh, all necessary systems on, altimeter set, hydraulic accumulation check, um, set, test checked. And uh, we did that earlier. We did that a little bit ago. There it is. Yeah. Um, hydraulic isolation test. Now, I don't know how to do... I don't know where that is. I don't know where the hydraulic isolation test is. I see the fire test. I don't know where that is, so I can't do that. Gyros, twist grip, flight position. So now... We turn this to flight. This is basically all you do in this one. 
very simple. Check out the sounds. I think it's quite nice. I think it's very nice. And here's some other sounds. There we go. And how about this one? A little bit louder. Very good. I'm liking it. I'm digging it. So the the other thing I don't like about it as much is that I can't quite fly it yet. So Twist Grip is on. Horn on. Now this is your warning horn. So this won't sound now because everything's correct. It says on RPM at 340, check sound. So I don't know how to check the sound actually. Not sure how to check the sound. There's some way, <clears throat> there's some button to press here to check the sound, but I don't know where it is. So that's not very helpful. I wonder if that worked. Um, check RPM in lower green arc. It is. That is here. Uh, fire test, gong, and illumination. Illumination. Now, I only saw the illumination. I don't hear a gong. Nope, no gong. Um, parameters check, no warning, voltages, and pressures. So basically, this is your uh, P's and T's test. Uh, make sure everything is good. All your instruments are in the green. Then you turn the landing light on. It's interesting, they have that on the checklist in red. So they really want you to have your landing light on for takeoff. And then it continues. Now the, the uh, checklist continues to all phases of flight, but that is, uh, I'm gonna come back for shutdown. I'm gonna leave it for now uh, and go to the flight. So I'm just gonna fly a little ways over to some Orbix scenery. I'm currently at Whitman Airport, which is a freeware scenery from FlightSim.2. I will put a link to that. Hopefully it's still available. Some things have been messed up with that. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess I'm ready to go. Wish me luck because I need a lot of work on this one. I don't know if it flies in a realistic way. Apparently it does. Apparently it does. It is a bit touchy. However, you don't need minute much uh, torque in the torque pedals. So we'll just lift off into a hover. Remember that it's left pedal, not right. It's an Airbus. I'm going up real slow. Look at the day, uh, the dust. I think that was, that's really well done. It may be one of the best in the sim so far. So there we go. It does have a very strong lean to the fat, fat side, which is the, the guy flying it. And uh, no, not bad. Not bad at all. And we'll just cruise over. And we are going to use the runway because they prefer that you do at a towered airport like this. There, look, there's another AS350 as part of the run as the airport scenery. They do have several helipads here. It's very much like the actual airport. So we'll get it back into a hover here. We would ask for takeoff clearance from the position we are. Basically, we're at Charlie. Plenty of room to take off. Instant replay out ex exterior view. Yep, I'm working on it. it uh, it's getting better. It's getting better. I'm really starting to like this aircraft. Fantastic sounds.
And we are ready to go. Let's take off. Let's take off. Let's get out of here. Oh boy. That's quite the lean. Oh well, there we go. Now we're straight. So as I say, I'm going over to some orbic scenery, the Hooper heliports. I'll try and do a better job of landing than I did last time. I made three attempts to just to make a a quick video earlier. Go out here along the freeway. Pretty sure this is the I-5. Pretty sure. It's been a while since I've been here. But always nice to use the freeway as a reference board. I'm trying to trim it out and make it uh, fly easily with my own joystick using an X56. I don't even know if they make these anymore. It has a light spring. That's why I use it. Um, there is an autopilot, a SAS autopilot assistance. This doesn't work yet. But the fact that it's there makes me think it, it might work someday. This is version one. Still was version one, as the title said. So I'm sure trimming uh, all four ways now. It shouldn't lean in cruise. There we go. Relax my feet. Not really using my feet anymore. In order to get a good cruise, I've had to um, make sh use the power to get a nice straight cruise. And... That is about when I'm, so now I'm a, I'm, that's about as fast as I can go. I'm barely, um, barely using forward stick. Just a little bit of forward stick. It actually looks right. It looks really good. It appears as it should. I'm flying around a little bit because I'm, I'm trying to look at something on the side. <laughs> trying to do what I do when I'm streaming, read some information. This is KBUR. Uh, this is Burbank Airport, Bob Hope Airport, also by Orbix. Um, I've seen a lot of people complain about this airport, but for a helicopter pilot, it's great. I've not really found anything wrong with it. I used to, this is the first place I ever took flight lessons, so I have a soft spot for it. I have to remember I can edit this if I need to. I'm used to streaming Flights with Joel on Twitch uh, where I can't edit anything. So uh, I think we're doing okay. I think we're doing all right. <laughs> it's trying to get, for some reason I closed, for some reason I closed the uh, information that I had open here. You may never know, I'll probably just edit all of this out. There we go. Perfect. So this is uh, version one of the AS, of the H125 AS350 B3E. It will include free updates. It has a detailed paint kit, as I mentioned before, with a hundred liveries already tested and zeroed by real world pilots and I've seen already seen comments from people who fly this aircraft who um, are very impressed with it now I'm sure I'll see more comments from people who fly this aircraft who will hate it that's how it goes uh, it has pilots and passengers floats which we uh, did I show the floats maybe not it has floats uh, dynamic weight options spotlight and you'll notice when you take things in and out the skids will change they, it'll it'll bounce up and down with the weight. It has a medical version, utility version, the Cineflex camera, fully dynamic sound pack, as I'm trying to demonstrate, virtual reality ready, realistic flight dynamics. They said that already. 4K uh, textures. What if you have an 8K monitor? Custom 3D instruments, detailed lighting, and the like.
Uh, so we're just going through Burbank here. That is the LA, that little bit of blue you see is the LA River. Off to your right. Last, I think I flew in one of these when I was in Los Angeles. I can't remember. Uh, as a passenger, I definitely, the last helicopter I flew in was probably a B-2. I don't think it had these instruments here. Um, so it's probably a B-2. I have to look it up. That is downtown Los Angeles. We're going just to the south of there. See how much I can screw up a landing. So if I let go, let's see. I'm going to let go of the controls and just see if it'll fly. It basically will. But not for long. And I, I'm making the smallest adjustments really small adjustments. I don't need to do anything to the pedals. Have I mentioned the mirror? Absolutely love the mirror. Really love every, um, every detail except the thicky thick dash. And you know, it seems too long and too thick and I've sat in them more than once. So I, that much I can say. You have, um, plenty of navigation. If this worked, you could do single pilot IFR. In a helicopter, you need um, a SAS in order to do single pilot IFR. But it's very capable, very capable, um, graphically amazing. Oh my gosh, I forgot my favorite uh, camera that I set up. There it is. Oh, the, the uh, rotors do weird things with the light at this view. Weird things with the light. That's the GoPro. GoPro camera. Uh oh, am I getting lost? A little bit. I've got to follow this, I think, just over here. Um, yes. Just over this way. This is not about the Orbix scenery. It's really about the um, H125, but the Orbix helipads, they have both uh, police and medical and I've got only the basically it's Hooper heliport but it includes a couple of a medical facility down in the um, Century City area and it includes the helipad up on top of uh, up there I think it's Citibank it's the tallest building in LA it includes a detail of that which is great it's really fun to land on that helipad so I'm trying to slow down now and not approach it too fast, as I did last time. It's just over to my right. And there's the jail. Those, those buildings that stand out a little bit, just a little bit stand out -y. Those are the ones. Now I'm trying to slow down but not get too slow. I've got wires. I'm doing a pinnacle landing basically, landing to a spot on a pinnacle up in the air. And this is a great speed. If I can keep this speed and height till I get nice and close, that would make me very happy. Here we go.
Oh, I love the way you can hear the traffic under there. Yeah, I still came in a little low. A little low, and let's get it right. Let's get it right. There we go. Just here. That's pretty good. Pretty gentle. Just a little bit off the H. There we are. All right. We go to the shutdown checklist. And then I'll go grab some coffee. So this is, um, this is a lot easier than the startup. It's a lot easier as you don't do a lot. But it's the um, manual's great. It has a lot. Approach and landing. Uh, it has climb crews, approach and landing, and, and some illustrations about how to do everything. Engine shutdown. Um, cyclic neutral. Collective full down and locked. It is. Friction's on, so that would be here. I, they don't do anything, obviously. But if you have a full cockpit in your garage, then you can do that. Horn off, well, that's interesting. That's something I didn't think of. So turn it off before you start the shutdown, and then it won't be going off. Uh, landing light off, which is back here, right here. There we go, I did keep that on the whole time, didn't I? Uh, throttle idle position so that's here and it just kind of goes fast I still would love to have a throttle a Sobo if anyone's watching a Sobo um, but it's there's not a big deal in this aircraft it's not as big of a deal calm nav and transponder off 430 GPS remain on now I have one switch to control all those. Pitot heat off, so all those are ignored. Uh, Pitot heat comes off. Avionics gyros off. Engine starting selector overhead switch to off. That's up here. So this is basically how you shut down, because it is FedEx. Full authority digital engine control. There we go. Let's watch it shut down. There's a few more steps, but I'm gonna thank you so much for watching. This is the Cohen Simulations H125AS350B3E. Subscribe and save. No, you won't save. But if you like the videos, I like making them. Let me know. Give it a thumbs up. Subs uh, hit the subscribe. And we will uh, see you back here real soon.